live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri. He is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable K. KSM show. Hey, 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 we're back, we're back, we're back. And I, I told you, I warned you that we may have to extend the cause <laughs> I'm keeping her here so that we can continue with our conversation. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. one more time, one more time. One more time. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that. <laughs> I have, I, it's like blood. You know, like, yeah, yeah, use blood, man. <laughs> use blood. <laughs> right, yeah. Mm. So, continue from where we left last right. week, you know. Um, Generally, talking about you know the sad thing about yeah, I, I don't care that people are pol people do politics, yeah. you know. I think what 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 is different in Ghana is that it's not just politics, it's very practice, yeah, it's very you yeah. know, yeah. <coughs> and so there's a there's a line you tow, and then the other side will say, Yeah, yeah, you have, you have a pay master, so, yeah. pay whatever I, I think, the hell. Yeah they mean by that yeah but let's continue from there i want to ask you something because you are a uh, media person sure you know yeah and it's not a joke there's a reason why we call the media or journalism the fourth estate, the estate of the room yeah you know because we have the three powerful arms of government mm -hmm. uh, what the executive legislature judiciary yeah. these are and the then three then, yeah hunches yeah. you know and because the media is so powerful, mm. it is regarded like the fourth estate, yeah. which means that stands yeah, out of all the three. Big, three. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, so we are the fourth estate. Yes. But I say that in Ghana many times, unfortunately, the fourth estate becomes like the fourth arm of government. <laughs> I guess. So. You know, guess and so. my question is this. What is your sense of the media and let me before I ask before I say anything yeah I think you have the right to be anywhere you want to be right it's your right right so I don't care if a journalist says me I'm MPP I'm NDC. NDC I yeah. don't care it's okay you have the right be, to be be, be, be truthful I, I prefer truthful I always yes. say this. I don't I am not neutral but I am truthful thank you in other words if NDC did something I don't support I don't support yes. they are not going to make me support it or I I'm not going to turn a blind eye because thank NDC. you no that's that's not it. Uh, the problem I prefer to be truthful mm -hmm. I feel like it holds more weight than to be neutral. thank you and how can I also be neutral in moments of oppression like people are demonstrating they have been sprayed with hot water I cannot speak because I have to be in the middle, in the middle <laughs> way. <laughs> and, so, uh, and ask, oh, was that, is it too hot? Is <laughs> it 100 <laughs> degrees? You know, that's yeah. when you know you're doing journal. No, yeah. you have to call it what it is. That yeah. spraying hot water yeah. on those law students was wrong. It is wrong. Take a stand. That's why we have editorial. Yeah. The problem in Ghana is m media ownership. Mm. Politicians have found their ways into, into media. the media. So a lot of media houses are owned by politicians. Mm -hmm. And if you're being paid by that, even if you don't ascribe to it, you are f sort of, in quotes, forced to toe a certain line. And I think that's the challenge because then you're thinking that, okay, even though it should not have had an influence, but this is the person who pays you. So you reluctantly kind of sing that tune. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, th for me, that's the sad aspect of mm -hmm. it. But if they would allow us, I mean, those politicians would know that ultimately it actually inures to their benefits because they would say, oh, yes, it, it is owned by this person. I mean, let me give the example of City. I know City gets a lot of bashing, but I think City does a good job. Um, Samolata Mensa has said publicly he's an NPP member. He served in the government before. I mean, he got upset and left. But the media he works, Bernard Avle, he does a fantastic job at holding people to account. He's not going to say, because my boss is uh, NPP, so I'm going to do that. If we have such a situation, I think also the shareholders they have kind of help. If it's one-man ownership, then you feel the impact of it. Mm. But if it's maybe they have multiple shareholders who have different views, then it works. Then you can have somebody like Bernard work at City where he works and be apolitical and do his job and have another person who also works there, BNDC, and still work there and not be affected by it, even mm -hmm. when people know that he took a certain line. But you cannot have the City situation everywhere. It's just one in, uh, what, 300 mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. 500 stations. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that is by a lot of them are 
owned by politicians who have a certain agenda who think that look you have to do it this way or uh, we're not going with you mm, i mean mm. where i find myself for instance um you have people from all kinds i mean there there there's someone there who's with a certain party uh, another person i am there because they think that okay she has a certain view but at least i am allowed to work then still express my view my view does not influence anything it's just my view it's bridget's view it's not the station's view so we i think in ghana the whole idea of neutrality we took it to a whole new height without necessarily understanding the context yeah. that even in neutrality, there's element of partis uh, uh, partisanship uh, 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 in being in, in, neutral. Yes, yes. And that's it, ridiculous. It's okay. People are so... I remember, I will never forget this, that in, uh, in 20, before the 2016 election, I had posted something that, oh, I am not neutral, I am truthful. And I remember a guy said, do you guys know what it means for this election? <laughs> that somebody who's going to cover the election say she's not neutral. And I said, but so, do you not <laughs> care about the fact that I am truthful? Yeah. Would you rather yeah. somebody is neutral or truthful? I always take the truth because the truth, you cannot do anything else but say it as it is. Mm. You know, if you're a liar, you're a liar. And, and it's something that, you know, we, we keep making reference to when it comes to our vice president. Like, you, I, w I would rather be truthful than anything else. Mm. And I think that we need to get Ghanaians to understand that it's okay. A journalist can be... Yes. Uh, uh, ...for a particular party and still do their jobs ob objectively. It can happen. That but people's happen. understanding of it is that no, no, you have to be in the middle. Oh, they are beating someone who is gay. So what? What does this say? Is, is it? Is this, let me see. What does it say about when you beat someone? Whether they is it wrong or not? Is it wrong? Because if you take that gay out, and you're beating someone, you say no, we shouldn't beat the person. But because you also have a certain bias towards them, Biases. now you cannot say it. That's when you're being untruthful. How, how, to what extent, and I, I'm glad you're, you're, you're broke, painting the bigger picture that the politicians have crept into the media yes. space. Yes, and that's the they, biggest problem, actually. Yes. That's the biggest yes, problem. Because yes. Now, these, these people working for certain media yeah, spaces yeah, yeah. who are aligned, yeah. are they doing it because they seriously believe that we are doing their work as journalists or <laughs> they are afraid that they dare not toe the line? Uh, wow, that's a difficult question. I, I think it's, um, I can answer it in two uh, ways. Both are correct, as in, there are people who genuinely believe that they yeah. are doing the right thing. Yeah. There are people who are doing it because that is what the station expects of mm. them. I mean, if I put myself in the case where I was on the biggest platform in Ghana, TV3, and my COO, Chief Operating Officer, comes in and says that i mean i will be shaking because that's my life is in his hands yeah so i could have easily said oh of course why not let me just go and sit there oh mpp is a fantastic part oh the dollar is two cities and so what nobody is suffering and keep my job but i thought that look i don't care you may be the coo but i am challenging you because what you want me to do is not right mm. so i did it and paid the consequences mm -hmm. but i could afford to pay the consequences mm. but somebody else who is and waiting to be yeah. paid at the end of the month yeah yeah depends on that and say look let me just i mean let me do it if i leave i leave i mean there are people who have worked at oman fm they've left and gone to other stations i'm working with some who did whatever they had to do then to survive there and then they moved to another station so i think that if you give people the opportunity to be themselves they'll be their true selves by working to fulfill what our ethics say we should do and not necessarily to a certain line but because when they come the system we find ourselves in journalists are also not being paid well yes so it's it's there yeah. people are still chasing solely before your story can go on air so if we, we deal with these fundamental if we don't deal with these fundamental issues where basic i, I keep saying the basic 2024, if you pay a journalist 3,000 cities as basic, you haven't committed any crime. But if I tell you the salaries of journalists, I even pay some, my staff at the cement shop even better than some of them. Mm. Yes. Mm. And that's a sad. So let's, I, I know money should never be an excuse, but it's a very important factor in it. It influences all kinds of things. Everything we are talking about in this country has to do with money. If it's a, a scandal, uh, the money that has been, this is SML yeah. scandal we are talking yeah. about, that a company has been paid 1.4 billion for literally doing no work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For literally doing no work. But they paid them because somebody created a system that said money. 
So if a journalist takes that small money, which they did, you know, there was a point where they paid journalists to do PR for them. So everybody wrote a story about SML, oh, what they do, blah, blah. But the KPMG report has exposed them and mm -hmm. showed that, look, they literally, this is work that NPA was even doing. This mm. is something that GR and NPA could mm. have easily done. Mm. Is that they created a company to just siphon funds and they did not increase anything in the petroleum sector because the increment that happened per the, the um, what's it called, KPMG reports was the result of the increment in taxes. Yeah. If you increase taxes, yeah. your revenue will go up. Yeah. It's like Dr. Baumia saying that the revenue in ECG has gone up because of digitalization. Please, when you increase the electricity bill, it will go up. That's why you don't even need it. It's not rocket science. Yeah. You know, so these yeah. are the things that. Money is an important factor in journalism. If people are paid well, they will work exactly. their hearts off. They exactly. will work. Yeah. They wouldn't yeah. need any power. And we see it. Why do you think we see the, the BBCs and the CNN? Our reporters from here go there and they are doing such fantastic job. Why do we see that? Because they give them good remuneration. And so they are motivated. No politician in Ghana went and here. That politician who stand before that BBC journalist, who was trained here at GIJ, will not do the thing that he will do to the Ghana journalists. Mm. Because he knows that actually BBC, the standard is different. Mm. So mm. it can happen. Mm. So let's take our journalists serious. Take it, like you're saying, fourth estate of the realm. There's a reason that is. Yes. So let's treat them as such. Yes. So that they can yes. you know, represent themselves as yeah. such. Yeah. Because if not, yes, we will still have these. It's okay. I mean, I, I guess it's in every institution, there are outliers. You will have people who would support a party, say all kinds of things. It is there. It is in every industry. But majority of journalists, they are not corrupt. They don't want to do bad things. They want to just go to work, earn a decent salary, yeah. and tell the yeah. stories of the people who don't have voices. But unfortunately, those are the people who are demotivated, who are not paid well, and so are, are yeah. still in the system. Yeah. And by the way, they are not doing bad anyway. It's a few people who are doing it, but it's because those people also are getting money from those who pay them to say what they want to hear or see on television. So yes, um, <laughs> bottom line is money. It, it improves everything. Yeah. Standards. Yeah. You know, look at what the fourth estate is doing. They did uh, fantastic uh, work on the scholarship secretariat where we saw that a person, uh, Samira Baumier's um, relative, to scholarship twice, did not go to the university. Mm. And it's supposed to be for brilliant but needy children. Yeah. Where uh, um, Freddie Blaze's daughter needed 5,000 pounds. <laughs> like he can't, he had money, yeah. millions of dollars to buy um, Kia, what's it called, vehicle for, for his, yeah. for his uh, party. Was, yeah. But when his daughter, can I mean, imagine, oh, I have five, uh, I have $10 million, give it to the party. Daddy, I need 5,000, oh God, brilliant and needy. Let's go to Solace. <laughs> I mean, just picture this in your head. It makes zero sense because they are taking advantage of it and the people who really need it don't. But it's the fourth estate that brought, they are doing serious journalism there. Um, Manasse Azuri and her colleagues, what they do, they need a lot of money. And sometimes they see, if you want to support their work, contribute. You can contribute financially to help them. Because the work they are doing there is superb. They were the same people who came for the um, SML. When they put it out originally, again, government discredited them. Yeah. Telling them yeah. that it was a lie. In fact, the government white paper said they paid them one billion. Yet, the KPMG report that came out says 1.4. And you know what is even terrible? That a government is so bad that they said this report, the KPMG report, was of national, had the national security implications. They won't. Like, but they are so bad that they had to release it to cover another scandal, the <laughs> Brian A. Champo Hotel scandal. Do you know how terrible? Yeah. Like, it, things are so bad that, okay, now we don't care about national security. Let's use this scandal to cover this scandal. To cover like, this, this it's, yeah. That, it's, it's, and it's journalists who are bringing these out. It's journalists who are bringing these out. So imagine if every radio, TV, online had that kind of resources. The kind of reports that you'll be seeing, no one is going to mention and bribe, oh, oh they are 10,000, yeah. don't publish that. Yeah. Oh, they take no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. Me, if you are coming to buy, come with three million. I'm telling yeah. you, dollars. So they will be scared to come before you. Yes. They will be yeah. so scared to you come don't, before you. You don't go cheap. But this one, oh. Wait, my mobile 500, the mobile 300. Oh, yeah. 500, that's your monthly salary is 1,000. Hey, 50 percent. Uh, ah, boss, Metro reports you will like it. <laughs> Metro, you yeah, will like it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's, well, that's just such a strong factor is 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 the, the, the amount of.
pay that we give to journalists. Mm, we do not disrespectful. give them, we res disrespect disrespectful. them so much. It's disrespectful. We treat them as nobodies. Yes, and yet they, they, they say, and it's true, the pen is mightier than the sword. Look at that. A, a single report. Okuja Blocker put that thing out. Yeah. And everybody is running helter skelter. I almost said like that police officer, skelter skelter. <laughs> <laughs> skelter skelter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, but, but that's it. it it's, um, <laughs> But that's just it. We need to remunerate them because look, don't talk about ethics. The book is there. We have the code of ethics. The mm -hmm. code, everything is there. Mm -hmm. We are always talking about, but who is talking about the being? If that being is not well fed mentally, that's, that's how does that person yes. come to work? Yep. And focus and yep. write the report the way you want yep. it. Now we yep. have chat GTP. If you even joke, we won't even come. We'll just put it in the computer and produce it. We, but the real journalism is going on the ground, telling the story about how uh, River, Pra, and those have become orange because of Galamse. But you need re resources to go there. If not, what the government did. So this is, you see, there was a point where it was the information minister, I believe it was Kujo Ponkoma, who took journalists, you know, on, I think on a boat and they went to take other places. Mm. And so the water is actually clean. That's what the journalists came to report because that's where they took them. But if Erastus Asari or Joy goes on his own, and if he tells you how much he puts in his documentary and brings that story, it's like, ah, oh, oh, because this one, the government did not follow him. Yes. Government, he went on his own, put and his he, own life at rest. He was address, able to afford it. Af afford, and that's just to yeah. produce one documentary, that's, one. Yeah. But the amount of money that went into that single report, the number of people who worked on the scholarship scandal at Fourth Estate, to pay them, they worked on it for months. Where is the resources coming from? How are they going to be paid? Because that report, who is paying them? Unless you go to their website, but they need money. We need to put money in there because those guys are doing some serious, crazy journalism. <laughs> I mean, I'm such a big fan of Manasi and his work mm -hmm. because it has stood the test of time. We worried John Muhammad in 2016. He's done it against this government. I mean, that's why when they came, they tried to silence him and he had to take cover. Mm -hmm. And you know, he said in his book, look, even John Mahama, when whatever I said about him, that man saw me, he extended, reached out his arm and shook my hand. We can, you can still have a journalist criticize and still see you and sh shake your hand. It's fine. Yeah. We, they do it in the U.S., White House correspondents. Yeah. They will write all manner of things about the president, but on the final, the president will roast them, come and stand there and talk about everything that they've written. Yeah. But that's, that's it. I just wish that Nanadu knew that unfortunately right now Nanadu is too old to be advised. So he doesn't <laughs> care. That's why they say, you didn't vote for me. That's so I'm not even supposed to be here. Yeah. Get up and be. So I mean, yeah. all those things. Yeah. yeah. It's to what extent? He, he loses it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree totally. Yeah. There are certain things that shouldn't, it's so unprecedented, shouldn't come from. Right. But to what extent yeah. do you accord or mm -hmm. portionally blame to his close, those who are closely surrounding him? The who president. are paid to advise him uh, to what extent are they blamable or what do you think i i, I don't think that anybody is advising uh, nanad i think everybody is there is looking for their bank accounts mm, you know mm, mm. um if um uh, nana uh, my daughter needs this or that's it. nobody is advising him because i think it's a character trait mm. it was dr nyaho nyaho tamaklo who told us this before he came into power that like if we voted for this man we will, the Ghanaians will learn a better lesson and he didn't lie and that statement still holds true till this day that at the peak of that um, VRA spillage you know in those constituencies in Mepe, uh, not Tong constituency yeah. south yeah. all those areas that he would go there and say like if we're looking at the voting pageant voting or parties, I'm not supposed be to be here you don't say that to somebody who has lost yeah. his or her home mm. I mean uh, you're a president of all of all persons I think he said that in the Kufi too that you didn't vote for uh, my, my candidate. My and yeah. so, yeah. But that is it's, it's his character. It's who he is. Unfortunately, he did not have somebody, uh, or maybe he had people to advise, but he just didn't take it because, hey, that's just with that. It's like there's nothing you can do about it. Unfortunately, he's above 70. Why? How are you going to advise? I mean, he's old. He's <laughs> literally too old. It means that he's never been empathetic. He's never had to walk in the shoes of another person. If he really had been poor before, having to sleep outside like people do on the street, having to live in uh, such conditions where you can lose your home after a rainfall, maybe he would speak better. Because you don't need to even be poor to know that they are going through it. Mm. He didn't need mm. to say that to mm. know that, look, <laughs> these people have lost their homes. We're not, we're, when are they going to get another one? Apart from the fact that they lost physical things psychologically, they are traumatized. Yeah. It could happen again. Yeah. They are traumatized. 
So you don't even need any book. He doesn't need a, to read a, a, yeah. a, a speech, nothing. Just by standing and saying, look, I know what you're going through. I feel your pain. Like things will be better. That's it. And people would have praised him. He would have won people over. He doesn't need to be there and remind them. Like, you don't, you don't, you know, it's, it's not rocket science that they, those, those, they don't, majority don't vote for NPP. But you, they didn't need to be reminded. Yeah. And the same, there's a certain almost disdain for certain chiefs. And it shows in the way your daughter singing national anthem was on the phone, moving around. Another chief who was at the time, now we're told, was sick then. Could not get her, was ordered like you're disrespecting her. So that's what it's a character. It's his character, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but that's, that's the person we got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether it's true or not, you know, uh, people talk about, I'm taking us out of Ghana for no a problem. bit, to the, the, the era of Ronald Reagan in the right, USA, right, 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 right. you know, where allegedly people were saying, at some latter point, he had de developed an Alzheimer's disease, right. which means oh my God. he I, really I, couldn't I, remember I wrote things. That about Nanado. <laughs> yeah, but oh no, no, but check this out. I did, yeah. His AIDS right. protected right. him so right. much, and and what that you wouldn't think that this man has, has Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's because yeah. he's always on top of things. Yeah. You know, the AIDS, that's what the right. AIDS are for. The right. bottom line of having an AIDS it's is to color. make your yeah. president look good. good. Yeah. So sometimes I wonder. Yeah. I wrote are to them about Nanado. And do they talk to him? I, or I, as you said, maybe... Maybe he's not listening. And, and no, I, unless, time, unless he's not listening. To be honest with you, I wish I could pull that tweet out. He, I, oh, yes, I think he's sworn in new ministers and said some things that I thought... I wrote that, does the president have dementia? Mm. Because of the symptoms that he, he was exhibiting. Yeah. Uh, same could be said about um, Joe Biden. There are people who, are that's, who keep... Yeah. making references to him, forgetting yeah. things, maybe he doesn't yeah. remember things, and it comes with the age. And I think when I said it, um, again, I think sometimes too, when I speak, maybe it's above certain people's pay grade, because sometimes you don't need to look at everything with a political lens or because really and truly, the man's age says that if you are in that age bracket, you are likely to suffer either Alzheimer's or dementia, all those but of course, it's not common. It's not something that we talk about here. No, but we maybe don't. we should take we that don't. serious. Yeah. I think somebody proposed that presidential candidates should be given some mental health yeah. uh, scrutiny, uh, screening. And I, I am with that. I'm for that. Yeah. That we should know that everybody coming in, you know, people who want to dredge the sea, you know, let's check them, make sure that, look, <laughs> they're okay, you know, because <laughs> sometimes when they sit and they talk, I think the last <laughs> interview I watched of Cheddar, it says that you, you're asking me this question about uh, knowing my bank account. If John Mahama or ex president or this person, will you ask them? You know, and but then here I, I was sitting and watching that interview and I'm thinking, okay, you're saying that you're not like NPP and NDC. Yeah. You want people to vote yeah. for you. Yeah. So one of the things that you to do to move away from that those core group is that hold yourself accountable, be open about your finances. Why are you struggling to tell us where you're getting your money from? That all these billboards they are so expensive. But now you're saying, okay, you're creating a Ghana fund, we should contribute, but you won't tell us how it's going to be done. Can you imagine if you gave him our resources? <laughs> he would just buy 10 Lamborghinis, <laughs> uh, Bugatti. Yeah. You, he's not going to render any account. So if you, look, yeah. when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. So if Ch Cheddar is showing you that this is who he's going to be, know that, he, of course, he's not going to win. But if, by any unforeseen circumstance, and he wins, Oh, forget it. <laughs> He'll be worse than NPP and DC. <laughs> because, because first, he doesn't get even the issues and why he's being asked, the questions that mm -hmm. he's being asked. Mm -hmm. So if he doesn't have the basics, understanding of it, people are tired of politicians, true. Yes. But they also yes. want to engage people who are smart. Not just uh, yeah. Tom, Dick and Harry opens his mouth and says that I wear a suit so I can be president, so yeah. let's follow him. No, yeah. that's, that's not yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> if, if you want to be held by that same standard, and, and that would help, yeah. Bring it! <laughs> so we got serious a bit. We got uh, we serious. To, no, you it's know. important. No, it's, I, 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 I really I, think it's important, and yeah. especially no, for me very, as a woman. Very serious, you know. As a woman, and in this country, women who do politics, um, it's it's so easy. I mean, the easiest attacks are either you are shallow, yeah, shallow, yeah. Um, yeah, you are ugly, you mm. are fat. Every time, you, because that is how they silence you. They think mm -hmm. they can shame you with mm -hmm. those things. So mm -hmm. I tell young girls that, look, do it. I mean, so if you like, 
tell yourself. Me, I, 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 I tweet. I say, oh God, the way I want to be a slave queen so bad. You can't shame me with that, oh. Mm -hmm. You, you can't. But I feel because people have given it such a negative connotation. People are embarrassed if you go, ah, me. When I do it, hey, call me a slave queen. Hey, it means what does it mean? I'm slain. It means I've dressed well. <laughs> but because we yeah. use that too silence people to intimidate people you are not going to intimidate me with those things i am none of those things mm -hmm. i will define what i am mm -hmm. by what i say and i do for example it's looking you say i'm not who said i am not why is my shoe not nice enough you know <laughs> you will not shame me with those things but yeah. that's those are that's how yeah. they get women silenced quiet and out of the public what space. is what is the worst you've heard about yourself that they say you were oh we're ready is there a worse? Can there be a worse? <laughs> I don't know the thing. I don't know. I remember that. I think it was a tweet about something. Somebody saying mm -hmm. that you should come up and fess up. Something happened in the room in London. Ah! I'm not too sure. Tell ah, me yes, a little yes. bit about it. Oh, yes. It was a... <laughs> I, I can't even believe that this person is a presidential aide. What happened? And so, no, I, I think... I wrote something about the presidents, uh, the presidents, but I, I write a lot about them. I've forgotten which one. Mm. And obviously hit him. You know, hit him like a bullet. I can imagine his chest. And he probably thought about, what can I, how do we get this girl? And you know, the NPP have spent the last 12 years investigating me, trying to find a scandal. The problem is that when I was growing up, I was so scared of everything that I tried to live a life like I live with my parents. Mm. I was a type, I was close from GIJ. And if you're a guy and you can also, oh, my mom is in there, but my mom is in there, my mom is in Takradi. I lied to everyone that I live with my parents. Mm. It was a way to stay out of trouble. Mm. And I also knew that, look, in future, some of these things could come back to hit yeah. you. I, so, I also told myself that, look, anything that my mom is around, I won't do. I will not do it if she's not around. Mm. That's just it. Mm. So that's how come you can't buy pressure for me. I mean, my friends call me, they say, you know, I, I joke, I'm a comedian. I know people don't believe it, but I, it's true. So, <laughs> when, so when he said that, when I was at GIJ, I was refused the visa. That was my first time, you know. And I to the UK, to the UK to the they UK. refused the yes, visa. Yes, and they yeah. refused it. So I think when I started TV3 again, I applied. Then when I applied, I did not fill the form. Somebody filled it for me. And I think there was a question. And the question was, is this your first passport? And it wasn't. So the person should have said no. no. And he said yes. And because of that, they uh, banned me but for almost 10 years. I'm saying, okay, for quite a almost thing. For just for that question, I was so mad, mm, you know. Mm. And <laughs> and I remember, I think at the time, to the British High Commissioner, then uh, they tried to get me to work. Do and I was like, look, I'm not part. You know, they used to like gather journalists to mm -hmm. say all kinds of things about our government. Then it was John Mahama, and I said, look, you will not get me to do that. I went, no, we can do something. I said, no, don't do anything about my visa. Let me save my ten year. If you think that answering that question, no. Mm -hmm. meant I deserve that tennis. Let me serve it. And I, I think it's ended in 2023. So the foundation of this is I've never been to London. Okay. So that tweet had come up and the, it was from the presidential aide. I think they call him Ni Teiko. And I had not seen him. I don't see their things. But somebody who followed me had tagged me you know, multiple times. So it was up for like 18 hours. And I read the thing says that, Bridget Totu, it is time you told the world and your husband what happened in London that night. Ah, wow. London. It's oh, everybody. If only, the, if only the British High Commission had given me a visa. Ah, I would have had a nice story to tell. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I hadn't. So, I mean, I had to respond and say, look, um, I have not been to London before, so you try another country. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still waiting. He didn't come back. So I think a day or two later, I responded to him and I said, look, come and tell everybody what happened in London so that, if not, I will take you on. <laughs> I'm still waiting. He hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't said come any. back. No, he hasn't come back. I just thought he would come and say something. I had a funny story, but look. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, 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 so, 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 silly, so. <laughs> yeah, you're right there in the thick of things, yes. you know. So th those are the things they do to, sh mm -hmm. to shame you, to, to think, that, oh, no, no, no. So imagine if I'd been to London. It would have meant that people would think, hey, what did she do in mm -hmm. London? But the fortunate thing is that people know that these guys are liars. Like they are pathological liars. They are not the type that they will put up something that is false and they will take it down. They will still insist that I look it at is the a statement. Truth. It's yeah. time you come clean. Yeah, about what happened in what that happened? night. Yes. So just imagine if I had been to London. But I will go. Ah, I'll go. <laughs> and I'll come and tell my own story. I'll come and tell you what happened in London that night. That night, it will come on. <laughs> <laughs> it will come on. <laughs> yeah. So having said that. Yeah. Um, I'm about to let you go finally. Oh, oh finally, I, I love being here. 
here. Uh, I, I, I love being here. I know. I love having these conversations. It's important that we have we come have this come. A cactus my, you know, bring my husband doctor. wants to come here. Uh, yeah. He's one of the places he mentioned that we have to come here. Yes. Cactus you have to come. Speak, yeah. You have to come. Yes. But yeah. how is he, you know, well, maybe he knows mm, yeah. who he's married to. He definitely, not yes. maybe, oh, no, he yes. definitely knows. Yes. <laughs> but when these bullets are coming at you, yeah. how is he handling it? Ah. <laughs> I'll share just one story. So um, share this one story. So, I'm listening. <laughs> so um, I mean, especially when it comes to his these guys, and you know, he's like, he wants to pick a phone, you know, and call someone, you know, and, and tell them his peace of mind. And I said, how could you say that about my wife and everything? Because he knows the truth. He knows that you know they are lying. And I was like, no, just leave them, babe. It's part of it. It's part of policy. So he gets really mad. He gets so mad. Mm. He gets. But I tell him not to talk about it, not to post about it, you know. And re quite recently, I think one NPP guy um, posted my, so my picture and my husband's picture. And the caption was that um, when you marry a pregnant woman, take a DNA test or something. And it was a senior NPP guy who was laughing at this. You know, he was so, wow. I mean, this is fake, you know, like a terrible story yeah. they put up about us. Yeah. And there's no truth in that. But he, I was like, so I picked the phone, I called him. Oh, okay, yes, sir. I mean, I don't usually admit. When I admit I've insulted someone, means I've insulted their heart, their ekra out, mm -hmm. you know. I dealt with him. I mean, he was, I think later when I met him, he said he even called his wife about, hey, but just called you, what, he, <laughs> what she did to me. Because my husband was there, and we, we, we talked about it, and said, yeah, I should. So I called him, and I said, look, I can deal with a lot of bullshit from full soldiers. I thought that <laughs> you are a foot soldier, <laughs> but you're behaving like a full soldier. And if you behave like a full soldier, I can treat you as a full soldier. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so, and he gets mad and talks. To, he talks and talks and mm. talks. Like he's always pantsing up and down. You know when these things happen. So that's how come he mutes me. He, mm -hmm. I, so he doesn't see a lot of the things that people say about me. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and he's in for the long haul. Yes, yeah, I know, right? yeah. So how now? Yeah. It's been, you've been tacked as, yeah. you know, NDC's yes, your yeah. master. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, oh, it comes I, with the territory. Um, I, yeah. I, I mean, the, oh, John Mahama. And, and, and send, that, to send the money. There are even speculations that uh, uh, you're doing all of this because you're going to be Minister of Information. I've, or I've something. read so many tweets about that. Yes. yes. NDC. What NDC. happens? Yeah. In case ah. <laughs> MPP comes in and they say it actually happens. Hey, oh, it actually God. happens that they want you to minister of information. Hey. Yeah, I say, okay. oh, we knew are, this. oh, I think there are more competent people like Sami Jemfi who is doing a hell of a job for yeah. NDC. Um, there's Felix Kwachi for I mean they've served in the previous government. They yeah. were. I have actually never processed it uh, about serving in any government. I have been approached to stand on, as an MP. Hmm. Uh, I think second D uh, had a sponsor and all that and the reason well, the main reason I did not do it is because I feel my honesty will not be appreciated mm. yes because mm. when you to honesty do this always politics, gets you in trouble yes in to Ghana. do this you have to uh, at least be a good liar uh, or a terrible liar like, like Baumia <laughs> <laughs> and I just realized I'm just not I just don't have the stomach for it I would probably tell the truth and it it may just not work. And I, I don't have the desire to be an MP. I feel you can make a difference. You can change the world without necessarily going to parliament. Right now, I see people lying. Everybody wants to go to parliament. I mean, look at the flag stuff out. Eh, the director of communication wants to go. Deputy director. Where, where are they going to look for there? Currently, they, are they, did I say flag stuff out? Sorry. Julobi House. <laughs> Jubilee House, yes. <laughs> Everybody there wants to go to parliament. Every single one of them from the money that they have stolen from the states, now they want to go to parliament. So if I even look at them, I feel like the integrity of parliament itself will be called to question mm. sometime to come. And I wouldn't want to be part of that kind of circle. So, but appointments, minister, I have never processed it to be honest. It's not something that I dream or think about. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. what I'm doing is right. Um, I don't know, it would take a lot of convincing mm. for me to do that because if I'm going to put my name to something, I, w I go all out. I, I go all out and do it, knowing very well that the outcome ultimately will be to help people. So I haven't thought about that. It's not why I do what I do. I, I will still be Bridget to beyond NDC. Mm -hmm. I will still have my name, everything. So I haven't. It's not because it's of that something. something that it hasn't. So it's, yeah. it's, I don't even know how I'm going yeah. to yeah. embrace it if it happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I can be PA, maybe. Yeah, I can be. Mm, mm. I can. I can be secretary, something. And I'm listening to you right <laughs> now. And right about now, yeah. I'm thinking, hey, I wonder what Abuzina is thinking. Do you know Abuzina? No. The guy who likes you. Ah! <laughs> 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 my boss. Oh, 
my God. Ah, we will need to, I, have to be, I have to take a picture with him. Oh, okay. I'll have to I'll meet him and sure take a picture with him. I'll have to meet him. I have to meet him. I know. He's not going to take a with you. We have to. We have to meet him. Look at this camera and tell Abuzina's only picture picture. Why? This is. Abuzina. Oh, Abuzina. What tribe? What tribe? Abuzina. He's gone, actually. He's gone. i Oh, Oh, i Oh, no. Me, me. Miss Mobo. Hey. Miss Mobo. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate you. I think I think I'm going to blow one more my cases on TV you know, <laughs> with permission. Um, but thank you, thank you so much for your support. And there are a lot of you like that. My husband went for a workshop, you know, and I think during the break someone recognized him. I hear that like the husband of Brid Bridget Otu and it became a whole topic. And then he calls me and says, I, no, I was there, I get a text from him. He says, mm -hmm. oh my God, you are loved though. I was like, are you sure? Are you sure? Hey, what's going on? And then he goes, oh, everybody's talking about you and they love you. This woman says, what you're doing? She said, female lawyer. Said, Some, so stories like Abuzina. Yeah, and the stories from my, what my husband tells me. It's actually motivation mm -hmm, enough mm -hmm, to keep going, mm -hmm. to know that at least if you're not touching anybody, you're touching one person. Mm. Hey, Abuzina somewhere. So <laughs> 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 yeah. So that is that. Uh, okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you too. No, We've thank had you so much. Extremely wonderful I time. I know. I've had oh, a great every time. every second of the show <laughs> has I been. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And of course, you know, I'm going to ask you to sign up again. Yes. So, like we always say, join us again another time okay but in the meantime <laughs> in between time uh, we are out of uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>